Welcome to the Just Josh Podcast. Who the fuck is this guy? Hey, who the fuck are you? Huh? Who the fuck are you? This whole thing's a little weird. Ah, never yet fear, laddie box. That's so funny because one of my first questions was, you know, obviously like the, the reggae scene, like expendable, sublime and stuff like that, pepper, like big influences on you guys. But are there any like artists that aren't in the scene that you guys are into? Cause when you said Wu Tang mine, I was going to say like a, a day to remember who's from Florida. They're great. Kind of a metal core. And then I like, oh, yeah. so good. And then uh, like kind of old school rap, like Wu Tang and Nas common tech nine stuff like that so are there any artists tupac. you guys are into yeah tupac of course oh yeah i was a uh, i was bumping 36 chambers on the way over here hell yeah oh there you go protect oh. your neck yeah um, me we all like like rock music too we all listen to a lot of rock like jay i know you like like chris cornell a lot oh, man i love audio slave yeah, no, I love so I, and I love Limp Biscuit too, man. Uh, I was claiming it right now. I don't care who cares. <laughs> He's out there hating. All right, I love Limp Biscuit. Hey, That's like cool. one of my favorite bands. They're fun. Dude, I'm telling you, Limp Biscuit was the band for me at one point when their first album came out. Then when they kind of like after Chocolate Starfish and stuff, they started to go to the MTV. Kind of everyone did. All bands did. I think kind of towards yeah. the end of the '90s. And uh, into the 2000s and stuff like that, and pop really kind of. But I'm telling you, Limp Biscuit was legit. They still are. I mean, I think I've seen them recently in some YouTube videos, and they still crush. Oh man, yeah, their live show was. I mean, it was almost spot on perfect from what I've seen the footage. Very charismatic group, I imagine. <laughs> and you know, sometimes, dude, you just got to play break yourself, and you, you know, just oh. break Rock something. Out. Like that. Yeah, you know, just go for it. Break stuff. That's what it is. Buddy. Yeah. <laughs> well, like break yourself, about. break something. You yeah, do that all it. those things when you listen to that song. Yeah. Uh, sometimes when I'm lagging, definitely can throw that on. It'll definitely pump you up. Um, I just, do you guys have any tattoos? It's kind of a random question, but uh, I just got another one. So I, was, I always wonder how many other people Where'd have. Where'd you get, uh, where's your new tat at, Josh? Yeah, what do you got? Um, so I went to Guardian Arts. His name's Casey Anderson. Uh, amazing artist. I always, I usually go for the artist more than like what I'm going to get. Does that make yeah. sense? So like I'm Absolutely. more, I'm more stoked that I'm going to that artist um, than what I'm actually getting. I, I can't. It's so sore. I just got it, so I can't. And I can't, <laughs> and I have your baseball tee on, so I can't really exactly roll up. <laughs> you, but, We're covering up the goods. Yeah, I know, right? What is it? Yeah, so I have a turtle. I have that turtle on the outside and then with like the ocean and the wave. So to keep that theme, I have uh, like the jungle and like an Aztec pyramid on the bottom. Oh, man. Now I'm bummed. Maybe you should take the shirt off, dude, because this yeah. is like a cool off. tattoo. <laughs> well, it's not, it's not done either. So out of respect for the artist, I might wait anyway, just because I feel like there's always this. It's the internet's so weird. Like I can show a half done piece, but like that sucks. I'm like, well, it's not done yet. Of course. I know. <laughs> you know, it's hey, such a bummer. You want the perfect reveal. You want That's the perfect how it is with reveal. music too, man. You don't want to show everybody those rough cuts, but yeah. Yeah, even though they're fire, you know. <laughs> <laughs> every every time someone sends me their music, hey, check out my music. Um, they always preface it or end with, uh, oh, it's not done yet. So I'm I'm like, don't worry, man. I I get. It. I'm a musician. I, I play music. I record music. Music, I totally understand. I, I can hear things for what they are or, or what they should be. You know, I was going to say our engineer, he has this thing where he won't let us hear demos anymore because we get demo-itis oh and my, we'll fall in love with the them? demo. Uh, yep. Yeah. And uh, so he's like, not anymore. Nope. No yeah. more demos for you. That's We've so blown it. We've blown our chances of getting demos <laughs> now. <laughs> Have to get that final cut. That's but it, awesome. back to your question, Josh, yeah. me and Adam don't have any tattoos. Jay is the only one in the band with tattoos. That's cool. Uh -huh. Or is Jay one? I have a, uh, I have one that's like, it's pretty heinous looking. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can see it. Oh, yeah. It's like, a, I'm a Capricorn. So when I was younger, I thought like, 
very highly of the Zodiac theory. And, right. uh, and, and I was like, you know, I need to get this on my, I was like, I want to get the Capricorn thing on my leg. So, so I got this tattoo, it's Capricorn tattoo, but it's a horrible tattoo. I le- I was like 18 at the time and I definitely learned a lesson about it, but I have an even worse one, which is a circle on my knee. Oh man. <laughs> Oh, that's not, oh, I right. thought it was going to be something horrible. At least it's not, you know. No. Yeah, it's not that noticeable. It's shape. So Can't it's very there. noticeable. It's hey. very noticeable when I wear shorts. <laughs> like, and the thing is, is it's not finished because I um I went to high school with this kid, um Aaron Hamoki. They call him Jaws in the skate scene. Uh-huh. And uh, he's like a huge, he's big time skateboarder, skates for Birdhouse. Like Dope. did some stuff with Tony Hawk, like zero gravity things, skateboarding and stuff. And uh, Hell yeah. I was at his house and his house is just a madhouse. There's always something going on. And his brother bought a tattoo gun and uh, we started tattooing a smiley face. And then we were just like, we ran out of ink. And so we were like, all right, well, I guess we'll just go skate. So we just went and skated, but I think I'm going to get the circle finished and it'll be uh, the circle of life. Oh, Oh, nice. That's awesome. Bring some meaning into it. Yeah. (laughs) That's awesome. Speaking of birdhouse, man, I miss getting CCS magazines in the mail when I was younger. Remember hookups? Yeah. yeah. Oh, man, that was yeah. like softcore porn. It was. <laughs> it kind oh, of was. See. That's so funny. Um, oh, yeah. You had to have one of those on your wall. Yeah. Nice and hentai. It was. Yeah. Uh, for being Adam, since you guys don't have tattoos, I actually think that's cool because I got my sleeves when I was real young. So even back then, it was still kind of iffy if you had tattoos or, you know, it, you'd be crossing the line sometimes if you got a full sleeve because then you might not get a job. Now it doesn't really matter. Yeah, but now, now that, people are more accepting of, you know. Yeah, now everyone has. Purple hair, tattoos, whatever. Yeah, now everyone has tattoos. So you guys are almost like the cool cats since you don't have oh, any. You guys are kind true. of like, you know, the opposite We've always been of what cool it is. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's been very tough. <laughs> I, I go Maybe and, one day. Yeah, no, well, you know what? It's a big commitment. So I don't blame anyone for not having tattoos. I'm very lucky. I never got any drunk tattoos or ones that I regret. Although uh, I am, I go in spurts. So I got a lot of my tattoos within like a two to three year span. Then I didn't get yeah. any more. And now I'm just starting to like finish off some or like get more. So I just got this one done on, on Wednesday. And I'm going tomorrow morning before my, I have a podcast with Greg tomorrow. So, oh, nice. so cool. yeah. So before him, I'm going oh, back. I will. I'll tell him you say, you guys say <laughs> what's up. It's funny. I had Nick from Ballyhoo, and I know they used to play in a band together. together. That's awesome. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, and I think that's how they ended. He kind of ended up in Ballyhoo. I think Jr. You know, was high on him. Their old bass player, and he oh, okay. recommended him, and they knew him through Greg because Greg produced a lot of Ballyhoo mm-hmm. albums. But um. Okay. But yeah, I'm going in to get another tattoo tomorrow. And uh dang, yeah. just like you said, you're in Different one of your spots. spots. Yeah, so a lot of the pieces uh I actually uh yesterday because I knew I was going to ask this question because I I haven't really asked anyone any tattoo questions since I've done this. I knew I was going to ask you this, so I figured how many do you have was going to be one of the questions. But since two, only one out of the three has some tattoos, only a couple of them. <laughs> I actually went and counted how many tattoos I have. And it took me how for, many? It took me forever. Well, the thing is it's like hard because I've gotten so many. I when I was done I counted 27. 27? 27, but like I would say 6 of them are like big pieces where they take up Oh, wow. Okay. You know, so I have mostly big pieces and then a couple small ones, you know. And tomorrow you're getting your first uh Face tattoo, is that what you said? <laughs> no, oh, but, but I'm, pre- <laughs> I'm pretty nervous because it is my first hand tattoo. So, oh, so, okay. far, so far up to date, I haven't gotten anything below the sleeves. And I've kept my legs pretty bare, minus my one leg. Um, <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing. You have one leg? <laughs> yeah, well, no, I, <laughs> I only have one leg. Um, but uh, I was about to say COVID took one, but I think we're still in the thick of things. So. That wouldn't be too, uh, soon. Yeah. too soon, Josh. Too yeah. soon. Wait, too Sorry, soon. you can edit that out, right? <laughs> soon, yeah. Um, no, I just have my one leg tattooed, but uh, I'm getting, 
this is so stupid. I guess this will come out after I get it done, so it won't matter anyway. It's not like I'm giving anything. <laughs> um, I'm getting uh, a little stick figure man on my, like, right here. Okay. And, uh, it's going to be my right-hand man. You get it? Oh, oh clever. Yeah. So I figured it's a good idea. I figured it was a good icebreaker. I keep geeking out when I think about them. Like, and someone comes up to me and they're like, ask me a question. I'm like, hold on, let me ask my right hand man. And I'm like, this. And I'm like, that yeah, is- we can do it. Yeah. And I figured, I love it. yeah, I figured it's small enough. And since it's right on the side of the palm, like most of the time, you know, my hand's going to be on the table or it's like, you know, your palms down. So it won't be too visible. It's not like I'm getting a big flower in my hand. That's cool. I haven't gotten asked any tattoo questions recently, so that's pretty cool. I got uh, I got some friends. I don't know if you've heard of the Jig Squad, but they're in the Jig Squad, and it's like a, a YouTube channel. And, and uh, one of them, Merrick, he got a camel on his toe. And then the other one, this guy, <laughs> Roast, he, uh, yeah. he got a moose on his knuckle. <laughs> oh, I get it. <laughs> I, I didn't get it right away. See? <laughs> That's so funny. I have like a 15 second delay on jokes. Just give me 15 seconds, I'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> That's so yeah. funny. I I love puns and I love like funny things like that too. And I almost was gonna get the stick figure with like his middle finger up or something like that. But I don't want oh, I, I don't see. want anything vulgar. You know, I, I try to all my stuff's like nature or and you said you were Capricorn? Is that what you said? Yes, I am. So I'm a Scorpio, so I got a... Uh, I'm so bad with camera. Oh, they say we're harmonious together. Well, oh, I have really? a yeah, I have a Scorpio, a scorpion on my forearm, and uh, I was supposed to get that with someone else, and then they, I got it, and they backed out. So I just have, but luckily it matches everything, kind of. Dude, but, scorpions are cool, man. That's, they are. It's cool. a cool zodiac symbol to have. It is. Mine's a little weird. It's a goat and a fish, like goat head, fish body. Yeah, they oh, are weird. Like some of the zodiac signs, you think they'd be different. Mine's a Virgo. I, I feel like it isn't it like a girl like spilling water or something. Like that's she has like definitely you. That's, the, that's the like you're... spilling water because that's definitely me. <laughs> <laughs> if she's spilling something, that's me. Yeah. Um. So I know he answered kind of Wu Tang and stuff, and we got a little bit um out of that talking about tattoos. But were there any other artists that influenced you guys or that kind of got you into music? Oh yeah. Um... I mean, like I said, I mean, I, I I think we all love rock, but definitely I like grew up listening to a lot of rock music. Like I love No Effects, No Use for a Name, yeah, and even like some of the more emo bands like Census Fail, The Used. Yeah. Like I love that type mm, of music. The Used, I love The Used. Yeah. Oh my god, I we went and saw them. I think I mean, might have been on tour, and I think we had a day off or something like that. But we've gotten to see Glassjaw and a couple other bands too, like going on tour. But The Used, man, live, Bert, so good. Dude, he has a tough job, man. That boy. They he, have high, they yeah, high. his notes are so high, and they got a little gravel on him, and it's like, dude's a beast. Yeah. I can play every instrument well. I can't sing or shit. Like, I'll sing in the shower, and it'll, it turns off. It's like, no. no. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> the water goes cold. Yeah, it's like, bro, no singing. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> Plus, man, that dude, you know, he dated one of the Osbournes. Yes, that's where I remember him from. Ooh, Aussie or Jack? <laughs> <laughs> I think your name's Kelly. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah, Kelly. No, I remember that because it was on the MT when they were doing the MTV thing too. So they showed him on the episodes, and he was pretty young back then, I think too. I think he was yeah early twenties or something. But yeah, I'm so jealous of anyone that can sing, just because I have zero singing ability. Um, you guys I'm sure have. A- he worked at it, Josh. You know, I'm sure he worked at it. You can get it. It's so that's every single artist I've had on here said that. And they're like, no, dude, I'm sure you're fine. You know, you sound great on the microphone, you know, in the pot. I'm like, yeah, but the podcast machine kind of fixes some stuff up. And I, maybe a producer, like if a produ- producer said, hey, this is your range, you sound good here. And even if it sounds off, I'll be like, okay, so I know that sounds good, even though it sounds off to me. Uh, I'm telling you, it, it doesn't. I've recorded it, it just sounds horrible. You know, I, just, Aww, Josh. <laughs> I love the voice because I love watching these kids that will never get the opportunity, but they can sing so well. So they do it. But and then I feel bad if they win because I know like their careers down the drain then, you know, just because they're going to get controlled for the next year. 
You almost uh, want to be the runner up or like the top three or something. Yeah. I think there is that girl on my head, Sierra lean on. She's kind of down your area away. She's kind of like a solo artist, very young. And yeah. Old, she's right? awesome. Yeah. Super yeah, sweet. I, I think we've met her before. She's yeah. She's super cool. Her friend Allegra was on the voice. She talked about and said she made it pretty far. She's amazing. I watched some of her stuff. So I saw Sierra posted about her and I did. She is great. I listened to like some of her, uh, song she sang on the voice she did awesome uh, we need to move on because i'm gonna get like depressed thinking about how i can't sing it's like hey the- you know it's like trying to be a professional wrestler it's not for everybody <laughs> yeah exactly um, like that no difference <laughs> no difference well i you know what i got sidetracked but what i was gonna say is every musician has said no i'm sure you could sing in this range but that's like everyone coming on and telling me i can grow a beard too just let it grow out bro in like three months you'll have a beard and it doesn't work like that it it doesn't no. grow more hairs you know i don't think anyone our band can grow a beard <sighs> yeah mine's pretty sparse no nah, you grow a pretty i get beard. i get patches i get like little patches here and there yeah no you do are I'm, I'm i'm patch adam i was gonna say adam you look you like you're fine yeah, you look like you do fine, man, because I, like, I one time, and it took me, like, six months to actually get it and trim it, like, right? I actually yes. had a decent-looking beard, or, I mean, mustache that looked full and, like, legit. But then I shaved it one time. I, I don't remember what for, and then it stopped growing back again. I was like, what the fuck? How did it – where did you go? <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of wrestling, too, I'm a – do any of it, did any of you guys watch wrestling when you were growing up? Because it was kind of a '90s thing. Yes, you did. I did. I didn't watch it so much. Yeah, I didn't watch wrestling. I watched a wrestler. I watched Hulk Hogan in this show that was like a. I think it was like a late '90s show. It was called Thunder in Paradise. Yes. It was so cool. I mean, he drives around in this boat. Right. And then the boat has like a wave runner in it. <laughs> And like he'd like get shot out of the back of the there it is right oh there. Oh my god. He'd get shot out of the back of the boat. And like, dude, it was the most epic thing. And I loved Hulk Hogan. Like, I thought he was the coolest dude. Ever. Oh my god, that's too funny. Do you have an do you have an eye patch? No. No. no, no, no. Oh no. It's like his version. Sorry, of I can't Rambo. get like a big I don't know why this bit is. It looks like he has an eye patch, John. Oh, I do see an eye patch actually. It was like uh oh yeah, he did have an eye patch for a minute, dude. He did where, where oh there it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Dude. Full pirate with it. Wow. Straight up. Look at how epic he looks. Talk about a mustache. Oh, man. Can you imagine the upkeep on this thing? Whew. Apparently he's a racist though. Perfectly. A little Jeez. racist. Just a little. Oh, dude, he's like, he had a, he had like a sex tape come out. The man's gone, you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. The, oh, yeah. The boat might have sank. <laughs> the, the, the thunder may have, you know. Thunder left paradise. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, dude, he's the Floridian Rambo. He really is. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's down in Florida, I think. <laughs> a good right? band name. <laughs> that is really a good band name. Yeah. Add that to the list. <laughs> Um, but wrestling is so, uh, I watched wrestling when I was younger and then I got out of it by like middle school, you know, and then I was more into sports and music and stuff like that. And then I went to college and I was like, I didn't watch it for, I don't know, 20 years or whatever. I'm 36 now. And, uh, I just, I guess it was on randomly and I started, I just, it happened to be on. And then long story short, this girl got punched, but she got punched in real life. So like, She was like bloody, like she had her face broken and shit like that. And it seemed like I was like, I thinking it was part of the story. I'm like, when did wrestling get okay again? Like, it seems like there's more athletes in there. It's not so cheesy. Like, it's not so much of storylines and it's more of like the wrestling and the athletics. And then I found out that it was real. Like, she actually got punched in the face and I kind of got back in the storylines and stuff like that. So now I'm a big fan. I watch it. It's like my guilty pleasure because I can see why people think it's lame or, or silly, but uh dude the amount of work it's almost like being a touring musician where you're on the road you're like doing shows oh, yeah. four or five nights uh, and then people don't realize like building a ring is like there's no springs or anything in it like yeah it give, has some give because of the weight of the bodies but i mean they're two by fours and like a mat like that shit hurts yeah. so just watching some of the uh 
the stuff, it kind of got me back into it. I think one of the things people are like, well, it's fake. I'm like, well, so is every other show, you know, Game of Thrones. And, you know, it's meant to be that, you know, you can yeah, criticize. Game of Thrones is fake. <laughs> I didn't know. Shit, man. I'm so sorry, Adam. I didn't mean to. Uh, <laughs> It'll be okay. <laughs> for you. Dude, I bought, I bought this belt the other day, and I had no <laughs> idea because. Oh, my God. I thought you won that. No. So oh, man. I saw it on the website. I guess it was like a Black Friday special or something. Or I guess because I watch wrestling, all the analytics has that shit come up into my ads. So I saw it. I'm like, oh, that'll be perfect for the new desk. You know, thinking it was maybe like six inches or something like that, like something I can stick on my desk. And so I get a couple packages in the mail. And since I was doing a podcast that night, I didn't even look who they were from. I just kind of was like, I'll wait. I'll wait till I do the podcast and I can just open it, you know, and be surprised and get the reaction like on film. So I opened this box and it could be either camera parts. I got some, you know, T-shirts and or, or the belt or a couple other things, maybe candles or some random stuff, lights for the studio yeah <laughs> and they, um they candles from the cypress hill podcast <laughs> yes i wasn't sure so i'm never and since we're not together like it's hard to have a smoke sesh you know and i never know which who smokes and doesn't i try not to smoke too much on a podcast because then that's why i have my little notes <laughs> it here. becomes a podcast yeah i well we had nick in the other day and we just because of covid to be safe you know we all wear masks into the studio, and then once they sit down and we're all like six feet, we take them off. So instead of passing a joint or like passing a bowl, I rolled us all joints. So we all had our own joint, and I didn't realize <laughs> the studio is decently big, but it's not huge either. You know, it's not like a big studio setup. So I forgot I got so baked in here that I was looking at the monitor. Oh jeez! Like, it was so smoky in here. I'm like, I don't even think people can see us right now. Like, Are we still recording? Oh, no. It, it totally looked like Good. a real podcast. Josh, <laughs> to go back to uh, that, dude, that podcast is so lit. To go back yeah. to that, uh, that WWF, uh, that that belt reminds me of uh, the Sublime tour with Soja and Common Kings. Oh, that's right. Where we had this cornhole set up every night. I mm -hmm. mean, before we go on and play, we go and play cornhole with with all the bands mm -hmm. backstage. And uh, I don't know who brought the. The weight belt. I think it was uh, Common Kings. It was Mata. Mata from Common Kings. He brought the weight belt, like the weight uh, WWF belt out, and he kept slapping it, bare chested around. <laughs> and I don't know what it was, but I wanted it, and uh, yes. I wanted to wanted to win. <laughs> was so there we played a every night cornhole? It? Oh, it was the cornhole contest. Yeah. Did cornhole. You get it? Well, no. Nah. It's not about it's not about who wins or who loses. You know, it's a little <laughs> more about. Uh, Those guys are cutthroat when it comes to the <laughs> game of cornhole. Like they, are they so do not good. play games. Then would... Soldier, like Soldier, went undefeated. So like, they were like professional. It was, all when it was uh, the, this guy Hellman, the yeah. uh, I think he's what is he? He's the horn player. The horn player, yeah, yeah. dude. He, so Hellman much. is one of the best uh, cornhole players I've ever seen. He was drunk. Germany. His eyes were closed, and he was he was stinking them. I yeah. mean, they don't even touch the ring. They just. Pew, pew, pew. That's crazy, dude. I was but, was I just looked it up because I was like, I'm pretty sure I think cornhole started in Maryland, but it was Germany, way off. It's Germany. Yeah. Germans yeah. got us. <laughs> but yeah, the belt is awesome. So I open it up, and I'm thinking it's like plastic because it said on the website like plastic rivets and all, and I'm thinking like this is gonna be plastic and everything. It's fucking metal. Like there's metal like. It's it's all metal and it's all leather. Like it might be a fake leather, but it's like heavy. It's fucking huge and like they're not real diamonds, but they're sparkly as fuck. It looks big. It's you might not big. be wearing that, Josh. I mean, maybe you will, but <laughs> I think Serenation is gonna make custom uh, weight belts or the uh, dude. You should. Your belts. Jay, you do so many flips and stuff like that. You would be the coolest wrestler ever. Oh, dude, you would I would. Be. Hey, the Rock. Like, what do you think of the Rock? I love the Rock. Well, here's what I think you should do, dude. This is one of my favorite wrestlers right now. He's probably pound for pound the best, like, actual wrestler, like, like the one that knows all the moves and can keep people safe and stuff like that. His name's Matt Riddle. I don't know if okay. you can... is this. Are we about to watch this yeah. right now? Are you about to show us the yeah. SmackDown footage? Yeah. yeah. Can you guys see this? Yes, yeah. we got you. 
So because you, you're so athletic, you're in shape, you're good looking, you're charismatic, you would be the perfect. Like, like, good day. Hey, see you. Oh, oh my gosh. Hey, oh, my brother, God. Appreciate it. Yeah. No joke. You would be Thank like, you. you could make millions of dollars being a wrestler. But this is, you guys should, you should team up with Matt Riddle. And you guys should be a tag team together. But here's Matt Riddle. <laughs> He's a total bro. You guys have that same kind of surfer vibe or like Florida vibe. Oh yeah, you and can he, take the kid out of California, but you can't take California out of the kid. Oh, he, <laughs> he only wears oh, candles. Yeah. Oh. That is epic. And when he jumps in the ring, he like flips him off. <laughs> He's the only wrestler that wrestles God. barefoot. Uh, wow. Man, if I'd have kept growing my hair out for sure, I'd be, uh, <laughs> I'd be his twin. Oh, oh my God. Like God. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that's wrestling right there. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Nice. That's epic. Dude, you could totally do that with him. I hey, mean, bro, I'm I ready. Can see it. I can Boom! See it. Boom! <laughs> da -da -da -da. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and the great thing about him yeah. is that he uses that, like, bro personality, so people kind of, like, underestimate him. They think he's kind of, like, goofy and yes. stuff. And he he's ridiculous, dude. I've never seen people suplex like he's just insane. But yeah, so I, I've gotten back into wrestling. Deal. Yeah, I got back into wrestling. I got this bad boy, which is cool. And since we're talking about stuff that I recently got, I want to start segments where I had uh, Logan on from Article, and uh, I had her guess what I had. Oh, I love it. And if, if she guesses right, I'll donate. So I have two things down here that I just got in the mail. I, I kind of already know, so I can't do like an unboxing or like a guessing, but um, I'll let you guys try and guess what they are. And then uh, if you get it right, I'm going to donate $100 to you guys. I know that's not a lot, but. Um, Aww, can, you shake, can you shake the box? Can I hear? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll give you a couple shaking? clues. I'll give you a couple clues first. I have to, so I'll try and give you like as many chances as possible. So the first thing is Christmas related, and it's small enough to fit on my desk. Okay. Well, you have a giant W. Oh, no, there, it's not wrapped. So that's not narrowing it down so much on size. I'm going to say it's the elf on the shelf. That's a good guess. Um, I would say it's, uh, it's a living thing. Oh, I should have waited to guess. <laughs> Wait, so it's... And it can go on. It's you said it's about six inches, right? No, you're making up inches now. You're oh, making inches out of nowhere. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, this, this is a PG she, podcast. What, <laughs> what, oh, what I meant is, uh, yeah, B, what you mean is that it fits on the table. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So if it's on the table, it's Christmassy and it's alive. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Okay. I'm I'm gonna go with a, a small Christmas tree. Yes. Congratulations. No way. Is it no the uh it's the Grinch Christmas tree that I picked oh up. Oh my god. From uh Trader Joe's. Yeah. I love it. How funny. That thing looks great. Oh it dude, that brings some color. That brings some color to the show. Look at that. Man. That's a vibe right there. We actually do a cover of the Grinch. It's pretty fun too. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yep. do you? That's dope as hell. Again, if I was a good yeah. producer, I would have it rigged up already. <laughs> I don't think anyone has it. <laughs> That's true. Okay, so congratulations. I'm going to donate $100 to you guys. And then I have one Aww. other. Aww. Josh, You're thank you very so welcome. Much, thank man. you so much really for coming. No, thank you guys for coming on. I really appreciate it. I have one more thing. Oh. This is fun anyway. This is not for money, but we're going to have fun. Oh, I have to give you clues. Sorry. It's like trying to guess anything. Um, it's Star Wars related, and and people like to collect these things. Star Wars related, and, and they people like, like to collect, collect it. Oh, oh yeah. that's gonna be so much. I know. People Does like it to have to do with any like any new Star Wars things that might have yeah. come out, like possibly yeah. the Mandalorian? Yes, actually. 
screen. Oh, yeah. Jay, that's all you. Were you, were you, were you talking to me? Baby Yoda. Um, well, I'll give oh. it to you. Yeah. That's it. Is it? No way. You got it on the first try? Well, it's, it's, it, it has baby. It's the Yoda. Mandalorian himself. Oh, it's the actual with, Mandalorian. With baby Yoda, though. Sorry, the camera's. Oh, oh dude. That is so cool. Dude, I he, uh, absolutely <laughs> love that show. It's a Funko Pop. That's why I said people collect. I've never had one. This is my first Funko Pop. I've never owned one. Well, now he's awesome. got to find his place on your desk, right? I think right in front. It's filling up quick. You got like a wrestling belt, a Mandalorian, and a, a Christmas tree right now. <laughs> Yeah, that's a lot for this table. I don't know. I might be over. Hey, you've got a lot going on. Yeah. Hey. These are just a few of my favorite things, I guess. Huh? Yeah. Back when I was single, I used to cover my house in everything that I loved. Yes. Yeah, I was literally just <laughs> like I was 30 skateboards. <laughs> I, I would love to meet someone. I would love to have kids one day, but I could not imagine her coming in here and being like, okay, that side's my half. Like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> okay. You have compromise. to stay okay. You have to compromise for sure. Well, you look like yours is pretty organized. Mine was just kind of like seashells and like random bottles from trips and like old Capri Sun packs <laughs> that meant something to me but wouldn't mean anything to no one and like just a bunch of weird stuff. I have this awesome portrait actually. It's this really hot chick and I always say it's my girlfriend, but she's riding in a chariot. And there's a volcano behind her. And then she's got like a lion, a tiger, a cheetah, a panther. Oh my. And like uh, eagles are soaring. And it's Jesus. like she's just riding in the chariot. Like I've never seen a, this before. The most mighty woman ever. <laughs> it's it's like a, it's like one of those eighties murals in a frame. And, oh, okay. Uh, and yeah. Got, she's got a a python on her neck. And I'm like, babe, that is you. And I tried to put it up in our bedroom, but she's not having it. Uh, uh, Uh (laughs) How's she supposed to live up to volcanoes, bears, tigers, pythons? I know. That's a lot of pressure, man. That's intimidating. Hey, man, she's a hell of a woman. Hell yeah. (laughs) You talking about the poster girl? Who are you talking about? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I meant the poster. Not you, honey. Um, you guys have you guys have a new single out, right? This one's on me. Yes. Yeah, we dropped that um, earlier in in October. We were just talking about uh, sending you a, a t shirt and a koozie. Oh. We just got these awesome koozies. Yeah, we'll mm-hmm. we'll send you a, this one's on me koozie, so you can rock that in Maryland. Yeah, I'll definitely do that. Just let me know how much. I don't wanna. I don't want free. Oh, dude, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Family, to, brother, uh, your family. Definitely want to. Three ninety free. Cool. That's uh, for the shirt you gave me that makes me look good in the gym. Those are dope shirts, just because I mean they're really not great quality, but they're great gym gym sh- shirts. Oh man, I feel like they've held up a while. I think I still have my crop too. Held up. Yeah, nice yeah. and tight around the biceps. Yeah, we'll have to do a, a swap again because since I switched up the logos and and I'm not doing that, I'll have to get you fresh ones that have the the new stuff on it. Well, it's funny, you know how you it, people ask you at the gym if that was like a gym thing. I have a new one that has like a paint splatter on it. it says "Ride Your Own co- Coattails," all the way across the whole shirt. And that's cool. More people that are in like weightlifting and like gym, like the gym stuff and like healthy. They hit me up on the internet. They're like, bro, can I get one of those shirts? It's dope. Yeah, because, that like, sounds like kinda, a good gym shirt. It does. Yeah, they kind of make it, they change the same to like a, a health thing. So I was like, okay, that's cool. Yeah, so like 80% of my sales is our gym people. <laughs> and not. Me. I don't doubt it, dude. It's catching fire lately. Like, I think people are going to live longer. The world is getting a lot healthier. So, yeah. you know, down here, things are definitely different. Yeah, it's, it's, a lot down here. it's paradise, baby. Yeah, I always have like weekend news stuff that I'll do with you. And it happened that all the crazy ones that I picked up from this weekend, they were all from Florida. So, <laughs> they're always from Florida. So, you that's what... down here, they drink we're too much. They go, they're like here. become pirates overnight. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it's. Uh, everyone, I've, I've had a lot of Florida bands on, and we always talk about how there's crazy ones. And then I actually went to look up what happened this weekend, and it was all Florida again. Um, let me see if I can hear. Uh... Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. Our bad. Uh, speaking on behalf of Florida, we're sorry. Yep, our bad. <laughs> we're trying to work on that. 
<laughs> I definitely saw um, one where it was like homeless guy eats another person's face or something like that. I'm pretty oh, that's pretty... old news. That's, oh, that's, that's old news. That's, that's that's called Tuesday, Tuesday in Miami. Yeah, that's what that that's is. Insane. No, I know. I, I know it's from a long... <laughs> I know that's, but I was down there when it happened. This was like five oh. years ago, four years ago or something. It was under that bridge, that one bridge yeah. or whatever. He was on basalt or something, like back when basalts were a thing. Yep. Like it was, it was a weird time. (laughs) Now that you're not even allowed to have basalts, man, you'd be lucky to get some Epsom salt. Right. Yeah, those don't do the same thing. (laughs) (laughs) Not that I would know. (laughs) Is that what you guys are doing after? You guys are gonna like do some salts and then go have band practice? Oh yeah, you know, just a normal, normal Tuesday. (laughs) Yeah. So I think what you're about. yeah, there you go. There's mm-hmm. the song. There we go. I was going to, do you guys yeah. want to talk a little bit about it? Yeah, and I'll play maybe like 20 seconds of it. Sure. Yeah. Cool. So the song was, was originally inspired because we have so many good friends down here that take such good care of us. And, uh, you know, being a musician, like Adam said earlier, you're always broke, um, <laughs> especially on tour, you know, and we just came across so many good people that, uh, you know, they kind of gave us that vibe, like no matter what kind of money or anything came into their life, they were always going to be good people. And uh, they always took good care of us. And that's like kind of, they would always say, you know, don't worry about it tonight. This one's on me. Come stay at my house, have a drink. Dinner's on me. This one's on me. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and so we made a lot of great friends just because they took us under their wing for a day or, or an evening or even just a moment. And, uh, and that is what inspired this song that's so cool and just being a crew member for a band like uh just having like when fans are so nice and they open up their house or like after late show and we're getting in at like 3 a.m 4 a.m and they have like tacos waiting for us in beds it's it 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 helps so much mentally just having it really does spot and you guys know the nash pad right oh yeah yeah of course i love those guys i need to have them help me i just got a new camera so I'm trying to pay it off by like getting a couple like gigs, you know, just doing maybe like instead of paying twelve hundred dollars plus for like a wedding photographer, just pay me like two hundred bucks and I'll give you yeah awesome videos and and they're not gonna be professional per se, but the camera's nice enough that they'll all look nice, you know. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And you gotta start somewhere, you know, and you can build that. So People need hard. that, man. They need that bargain. But that's so cool that you guys uh, kind of formed a song around that because it really is such, you know, fans are such a big part of not only the band, obviously, but even a lot of the touring, time, especially nowadays, especially now, a lot of backyard uh, concerts I'm seeing going on to get money in artist's pocket. Oh, Adam left. I feel like he started to chime in and like, we kind of cut him off. I think he's up. looking for tequila or something. I think he's looking for a beer. Oh, that's cool. All right. <laughs> So this is Sarah Nation's uh, newest single. This one's on me. me. Money won't make me something that I'm not. But if I had a lot, I'd still be the same on me. No shit, no shoes, chilling on the beach. Still be living day by day. Be nice to know my bills are paid. Hey, cheers. Cheers. Cheers, uh, cheers. 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 i love that man i was jamming to it earlier i like i don't know i like all your me i'm kind of biased but oh we appreciate you brother we really do um, what, I remember what, meeting you in uh, Virginia at that show in Virginia. Was that right? That? Was, I that think it cashed, was. was that with Tunnel Vision and Cashed Out? Yes. 
Oh, yeah, they had the RV. Wasn't it in Indiana small. that I, we met you, I thought? Yeah. That's right. Didn't you bring uh, your dog? Or you had the video with your dog, right? Did I bring them? I might have brought it, yeah, because it oh, they have great parking for that. I just parked right in front of the uh, the little thing there. Is yeah, it- I just remember uh, meeting you there, man. You, you've always uh, just supported us and always been awesome. Oh, I no. Now, you guys are total pros. It was great uh, meeting you and then also working with you guys on a couple shows that we did with Ballyhoo down in Florida. That was a lot of fun. That's right. right. Yeah. Yeah, um, those are great guys. Remember that day was such fire surf. <laughs> Do you want surfing that day? No, I wanted uh, to. I actually like put out a post. I was like, anybody with a board, please meet me. <laughs> I, I blew it. I had no idea. It was just like, it was peeling less and it was just, which is frontside for me. And it was glass. Uh-huh. From that moment on, Jay always brought a surfboard in the trailer. Everywhere. Everywhere. I it's like a landlocked state. He'd be like, I'm still bringing it. You never know. Yeah. <laughs> you surfed in Colorado. I've surfed in, on rivers like yeah. multiple times. Oh, wow. On That's tour. Dope. We'll just pull over and find a spot and I'll try and go for it. Yeah. I mean, as long as there's some ripple, you know, I guess, you know, some sort of motion. Uh, you know what sucks? There's is- some rivers in, in Colorado that are like, they're like a four and a half foot, five foot wave sometimes. And Why? like when you fall, yeah. it's all rocks in there. So you're like, you know, it's dangerous. Right. I, uh, in Maryland, we have beach, which is nice, but I mean, we have zero waves and, and the water's dirty. So, so I, like I do more skateboarding and sur- and uh, snowboarding because we can go up to Vermont and stuff like that and, and snowboard or even go out to Colorado if we need to. Um, what uh, I saw you guys were also recording a bunch of other music as well that you just posted. Um, are all these singles and songs kind of part of that collection? Or is that new music set, uh, or new music that's coming out? It's going to be new music. Um, yeah, we recorded quite a, a few songs. Six, just We spent a, a week in the studio this past week, and it was just awesome. We never spend that much time usually. Usually we'll do like two or three days on, come back. Mm-hmm. So it's just so cool to be there every day and kind of be oh, in that yeah. vibe. It was so cool. I mean, you stay in the house. You like we're cooking together. We're eating together. Yeah. We're, like, you know, we're just hanging out. And our producer is such a cool guy. He's basically, you know, the missing member of our band. He's like the fifth member. Yeah. yeah. He, he's like our brother from another mother. So uh, Josh Saladay. Josh Saladay. Yeah. yeah. Shout out. And, awesome. Uh, if we just hang out and like, dude, it's nothing but good vibes. And the house was off the chain. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Some it's of the so coolest cool. things I've ever seen. That's I feel like that's what a producer or a manager should be is almost like a six member of the band or whatever, you know, yeah. any band you have that should always kind of be part of it, not just always always business. Cause sometimes I meet people and they're like too businessy. And I'm like, eh, yep. I don't know if I really want to work with you. Yeah. <laughs> Some people are dry, man, dry. Yeah. Which is good for business at times, but you know. It's better to vibe. It's always better to vibe. Yeah. yeah. I think I, you know, that's why I think uh, when I work with bands, uh, I don't, I always thought that double dipping in management and booking never really ended well, just because either someone's coming from one side or the other. And so that's when money starts going missing or things don't always go smoothly just because they're trying to do too much. But I thought the only, the only one person in a band's team that should really just be all about the money and all about the bottom line or business is the booking agent. You know, your job is to bring in the most money and book shows and then working with the manager, make sure that the shows that you're booking coincide with the branding and what you guys are trying to do and getting you out there. But yeah, yeah. I see. <laughs> but um, other than that, yeah. Um, and you guys just did a drive-in show. Uh, have you, was that the only one you did this summer? Yep. Yeah. yeah, we just did that one because uh, we just have such a, like Jay was saying earlier, we have so many good friends in our life and such a good like local community that, that we knew we could pull it off because there is a lot that goes into it, obviously. Like, you so know, much. it's just, oh my gosh, just getting the cars and like making sure like everyone's, everyone can hear it and see it and the lighting is good. So it's just a good experience. Um, security. Production. Security. It was regulation. Exactly. <laughs> it was. Sure. Yeah. Like but it was such a cool experience just doing it like in Madeira Beach, like where we are from. Like it's just we have so much love and you could just feel it that night. We all missed each other. Like I think that was our first like big show we had had in like six months. 
mm-hmm. six or seven. So you could just feel the love on both sides. That night. I was just about to say how amazing was that? And was it weird that people couldn't be right up at the stage? Uh, well, I mean, in Florida, it's not, uh, it's not basically mandated that you have to, you know, stay six feet apart. It's oh, okay. basically up to choice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, and people, so it was almost like a regular show. Wear a mask or not. Everyone who bought a spot to the, to the show had their 10 feet of space. So mm-hmm. if you didn't want to go out, you could stay in your space and if you did, you you know, did. enjoy the show comfortably, you know. I don't mind that. I think it's a good rule. You know, you're still being safe. Oh, People get to enjoy it. Of course. Exactly. It yeah. was so cool. Everybody had like their own little tailgate party going on. Yeah, everyone everyone's just in their like bed of their trucks. Or some of our close friends, they parked up right next to each other and they'd make a big little spot. But it's oh, all friends cool. and family. It's all just the closest, you know, people to us that were out there and we just love and appreciate everyone that was out there and showed support and came and saw us. It was beautiful. And uh, was that uh, Saltwater Hippie? Did, are they the ones that uh, threw yes, that or helped you with that? Us. Awesome. Yep. Such, such great people. Uh, you guys have been kind of working, Amazing with, people. working with them for a while now. And they have a bar as well down there that they opened? Yes, oh, yeah. an amazing bar. Saltwater Hippie Beach Bar. Talk about a great vibe. That bar is it. Uh, I can't wait. Key to West meets there. Texas is what it is. Yeah. Actually, B's got a Saltwater Hippie hat on. They were our first sponsor. Uh, I'm usually always wearing Saltwater Hippie. Me and Adam were going to go skate after this. And, like, this this shirt right here is, like, my ultimate skate shirt. It's, like, <laughs> super light. It's great for sweat and whatnot. But uh, I'm always wearing Saltwater Hippie. And they were our first ever sponsor. They've had our back since day one. Yeah. Yeah, they really have. I'm pretty sure I uh, a long time ago – Maybe not a long time ago, but uh, a couple years ago, I think uh, you get to the contest, and I did a video, and I actually got it was like saltwater hippie swag and yeah, that's and right, handful <laughs> stuff that was really cool. That was it's cool, and I felt bad because I'm like, well, I'm kind of like it's like even though I'm a fan and stuff, I'm you know I'm kind of in the industry. I I didn't know you guys at the time, but I mean, I felt kind of bad because I was like, maybe I should just give this to like a real serenation fan or something like that but that Aww, yeah, cool. are are. yeah yes. i like yeah. to think so i like to think so oh man i wish i had these pictures jay you uh you always do these insane backflips i think i have a couple pictures of these like yeah, has there ever been a our, point yeah our instagram definitely has some um, yeah one of them on there is, is uh the biggest there's actually two of them that are the two biggest backflips i've ever done uh oh there's me on a surfboard this is janice yeah. right? that was janice yeah uh that's, that's a, it that was one Orlando. love a oh, one love that's california oh yeah that's what that was that was one love I have another um, one there's a pretty big look how yeah. you are dude oh dude okay. that's nothing i see <laughs> big backwards so, like, yeah if you can see the one that was one of the most epic moments of my dude, life that is, oh that, that's a story that too so cool what a shot if dude. you look right Right there, you can see those blonde dreadlocks. That's my friend Jack, the leader of the right Jig Squad. Yeah. Oh, okay. And, yeah. uh, dude, that was like, I showed up with a surfboard to that gig, <laughs> and Adam goes, dude, what are you doing? Like, you can see I put, uh, like, pool foam and, and duct tape over the front right. so it wasn't Make pointy. Group. Yeah. And, uh, okay. and Adam goes, dude, what are you doing with that? And I go, <laughs> dude, don't even worry about it, bro. You just, you'll know. <laughs> don't you'll know when you see it. <laughs> And I threw it under the stage, and uh, and we were in the middle. We were doing our last song, What Up? And I told some friends, I'm like, hey, because I had seen Slightly Stupid attempt it. And uh, I guess right. from what I heard, the guy, I think it was Kyle, he he fell and broke his leg or something like that. I think there's video really? on YouTube. Oh, my God. And, I- uh, so what he tried to do was he tried to actually let the people push him you know yeah. along the crowd like and ca- like ev- like a whole bunch of random people you know you're gonna run into like a young girl or someone that's not yeah. got a grip and eventually right. they're gonna drop it you know that's a tough thing to get them to really float you good yeah. and balancing on a surfboard's hard enough right so i talked to so i talked to some friends and uh jack was one of them and uh just a bunch of great fans jeff glenn was right there and uh, i told him hey look so you four or five guys are going to hold this thing solid and we're going to go through the crowd. And they were like, all right, let's do it. 
and then people like reached up and touched and everything but we had a pretty solid idea of how to do it yeah and it went down epically yeah it was so cool well what show was this is this one left? reggae, reggae rise up oh, reggae rise up. last oh, reggae yeah. rise up hell yeah no that's such a great idea and it was smart having those people help you out too always have that like make it look spontaneous you know but still be interactive and stuff organized chaos one thing i've learned man there's nothing really spontaneous nope. in those shows it's all <laughs> planned out you know to some degree to some degree, to some yeah. degree it's planned out yeah, but that's insane these backflips that you can do and you said you had the biggest one you ever did there's there was two of them reggae rise up was one of them i did a backflip on that and actually i broke the stage allegedly <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah you don't want to say it. i'll edit that out <laughs> Well, the, guy, uh, <laughs> the guy that was there, he's like, dude, that was the most epic thing I've ever seen. That was awesome. I don't even care. <laughs> and uh, and then the other one was the biggest one I've ever done, and that was at Red Rocks. And uh, it was oh, wow. insane, dude. I mean, you look at the footage, and it looks like I jumped off like I'm parachuting or something. And uh, I climbed up there. I looked like Spider-Man climbing a building. <laughs> And then uh, I threw this backflip, and it oh it was so high when I landed, I instantly bruised my heel. And like we have the footage, and uh, you can see you the rest of the show. I'm like, huh? Is it uh, public anywhere or no? I think it's in. There's a clip of him backflipping uh, in a, like a recap video. I don't. Uh, it, it would be from summer of uh, 2019. And in the recap video, you can see like how big he flipped, but I don't think it got him like actually landing. So you can see like his ankle kind of like yeah, you could, it, oh, that was so, so high. It was high so up. high. Yeah. But they had Amazing. all you could eat uh, Hawaiian ice. So I just sat in the <laughs> green room. Ate all you could eat Hawaiian ice. Uh, that's the awesome. one at a, a Cal San Diego was pretty sketchy too. You had to like backflip at an angle over the barricade. Oh, and the camera guy was underneath me. He didn't even oh. know it was going down. Oh, jeez. Did he get it, yeah. though? Like, the kind of the uh, angle? It's a really hard he angle to get from right underneath me. Uh, very few photographers have gotten anything uh, usable. Is usable, yeah. Yeah, if they do, you know it's like you're a pro. <laughs> yeah. Um, Adam, let's get you in here a little bit more, too. I feel bad. Um, I just saw that oh, you... I uh, feel bad. I'm having a great time, man. <laughs> Good. Me, too, dude. Yeah, it's, it's been a lot of fun. Um, you just got a new Martin, I think I saw, right? Or is that old news? Uh, yes, I did. Did. Uh, I like it a lot. I actually like it so much. I bought another one. Same one. I got two of them. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So you have. Uh, I play a lot of gigs. So I mean, uh, I, yeah. I put at least five, six hours of playing on it every single day, and it just it wears it down really, you know, really quickly. Yeah. I'm constantly changing strings on it, and you know, have to put replace the frets and pickups wow. on it yeah it's a lot of maintenance florida weather man florida weather yeah i actually yeah, I just switched say. these uh silk and uh steel strings which i don't know i'm trying to get an endorsement here but this these <laughs> strings i Go swear by them they feel great on my fingers and they don't break i, I could play like six gigs with them they don't break i still have to change those what are they is there a brand There's... yeah i think adam what kind of guitar is your martin is it drs2 drs drs2 they are, yeah, uh, these are the ones right here. They're called Martins. Oh, wait. Can you see that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, they're by Martin. Okay, yeah. By Martin? Can you Authentic see that? acoustic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, they're, they're like silk and string, or silk and steel, and they're absolutely wow. amazing. Love them. Recommend them. Buy them or don't. Those are your choices. <laughs> Some people like Taylors, but I've always been a Martin. I'm always a Martin guy. No offense to Taylor, just uh, just okay. my sound and the way that I play. I really like Martin's better. Me too. And then I just got this Fender behind me too. I told myself. Just like me, I like I like Fenders. Uh, uh, I'm not a Gibson Fender. guy either. I uh, I don't know. I prefer We're a PRS. Gibson. I'm not really a PRS, not a PRS guy, guy either. either. I don't know why. I think Fender's classic, and I think it's because I can play it the easiest. It's easiest with my hand. Um, well, I play actually a G and L, uh, which is. Uh, Leo Fender's last project he ever did before he, you know, stopped making guitars completely. Oh, yeah. So it's it's one of my favorites. I get trapped. If I, if I didn't have that one, I'd probably play, you know, Telly. Classic yeah. Tellys. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, yeah, I think my first guitar was a Squire, but it was badass looking and it sounded great. But I mean, when you're like eight, you know, that's all you can afford. And then I told myself if I ever got the money, I was going to go get an American one. Tell you what, some of those Mex uh, Mexican tellies and me Mexican straps. Yeah, they play just, they as, play, just as good. <laughs> they play just as good sometimes. Yeah. I would totally get, like, if I was a famous musician on tour, I would get uh, a bunch of the Mexican ones and play those on stage and then do whatever, hand them out to the crowd or, like, you know, smash them. Hand them out. Because, you know, you're going to be sweating and, and just putting in work on them. And, yeah. yeah, when you're on that level, like, the punk rock thing, just have them come up, play, like, a quick song with you, and then – and then give them the guitar and shoo them on their way. That's just about it. That would be epic. I guess if you had enough guitars, you could do that. <laughs> Dude, you were just holding what, Eddie Van Halen's guitar? Yeah, I was uh, holding the uh, Eddie Van Halen guitar that uh, was in the studio with us. Oh, uh, so cool. And the oh, guitar I saw from that. Old Business video. Oh, yeah, actually, we didn't get a chance to use that one on the record or on the new songs, but uh, we definitely used some of the effects pedals, same effects pedals that they used. But it, man, it was so cool. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, there it is. All these guitars. Yeah. Y'all, yeah. So cool. That blue one right there to the left, top left, that was my favorite. It's called a triple humbucker. Mm -hmm. Well, it has, is that a, what it's called? it has a triple humbucker. It has a triple? Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. I got the uh, yeah. HSS, which is the humbucker and the single single, because I wanted to be able to rock. Now it sucks. Yeah. It's kind of, it sucks it's away from the bridge, but. That's okay. It sounds amazing. And you can change it to a single, so you still get that classic Fender sound. I really only use bridge, man, when I'm, when I'm doing solos or when yeah. I, you know, really need to kick it into that high gear and just kind of cut through. That's really the only time I ever use the bridge pickup. But other than that, I just rock it right down the middle. Yep. A medium porridge guy, you know? <laughs> hey. I, uh, I, you also have been doing these, like, guitar playthrough videos, and I actually played along the other day. I sat there, I'm like, yeah, oh, I'm at them now. Maybe you should do more of those. Yeah. Should I? These, I don't know. I, dude, those are really, I'm really I'm not much cool. of a teacher, man. I'm like, a, I'm self-taught musician, so I, I don't know how to teach very well. I just kind of understand it the way I understand it. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if I could, I could do more videos, I guess. I mean, just showing you the chords, because some people already know guitar, but they don't, like, know the chords to our song. So they like when you show them, you know. That's, yeah. He's that's a good guitar player. No, it's perfect how you have it like show up on screen too, so people can see it. So if they need to look it up, if they don't necessarily understand too. No, it was perfect, man. Sometimes simple is better for people that are trying to learn yeah. it, you know, especially. It's gonna mess people up too. Is uh, we we tune our uh, we tune our instruments to E flat, so oh. we are in half step tuning. Nice. Is that to match vocals and stuff, or is that just easier or different, or is that what your sound it's, is? It's actually. Uh, I mean, it has something to do with the, uh, uh, I'm it getting does, secondhand high over here. <laughs> it does save my vocals, though, <laughs> my especially on the road. It, it makes things just that a little hair easier for me, I've noticed personally, because I didn't know anything about music. Adam taught me what that was, and uh, he's like, we should probably play in half step, and it'll give you longevity, and it really has. You can always go higher, too. You can just put yeah. a capo on and go higher, but you can't yeah. really go lower. If you're, yeah. you're as low as you can go. True. So, I was going to say, I, when I was younger, I started on piano and from piano, I learned basically every instrument. It was almost like, that's a good instrument. Second, yeah. It's very visual. Yeah. yeah. You, tu you turn it up. It's whole notes, half notes, black keys, white keys. It's a guitar. So that's how I look at my guitar. And then it's just the same thing, basically slightly different, obviously, but it's, it's basically the same thing. Um, but, uh, now that I'm older, it's, it's all ear now, you know, and I still don't have some of the same muscle memory as when I was younger. Like, I'd have to sit down and like practice for a couple of weeks if I were to ever go on tour or anything like that. But it was funny that you mentioned that, you know, you were self-taught because I, in preparation for this, I read like, I don't know, like 10 interviews you guys did. I like just looked up every single Aww. interview I could find just, and I made sure not to ask, where'd you get your name from? One thing I'm trying to do because I'm always trying to be like a better person and grow is I'll notice that I'll look and see people doing something that I think is kind of lame or stupid. And then I'll catch myself doing it. And then I'm like, fuck. So I'm trying to call myself out on the podcast more often and have a segment where it's like, uh, I don't know, I'll come up with a name at some point. But basically, something that, something that I do that I really shouldn't is I'll do one of these posts 
Um, where is it? Oh, so I'll do this post where it's like, I normally don't, but so I'll see people post oh, all whatever. the time. And they're like, well, I normally don't post body pics, but here's one <laughs> in a bikini. But, yeah, but it's like some exactly like, like deprecating post about how they don't look good. But I did this with my tattoo the other day. I was like, I normally don't post tattoo pics till it's finished, but, and I still fucking <laughs> posted it and I felt like such a douchebag. Uh, I need oh, to, yeah. you were I just need excited. To, you were just excited. Uh, do you guys have any bad habits or things that you catch yourselves doing that you're like, how much time you got? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, that's why I thought I, it was a good segment because I knew I could keep doing it every week because there's so many things. Oh, I yeah. Come up with. You know, we all do stuff. It's just like, why, why did I do that? But so, I feel like it holds like, me accountable now that I've put it out there. I've definitely done that with social media more so with like meeting someone famous. You definitely do something like where you know, yeah. you're like, oh man, why what? did I, what did yeah. oh, I tell, tell him to Dustin oh, no. oh yeah. So <laughs> yeah, I obviously sound like a, like a, I don't know. I think I'm just stoked all the time. You know what I'm saying? But some <laughs> people say I sound like a Sean Penn and uh, I was, I met him once. I was on, out in Cali <laughs> skating. And I saw him and I was like, I knew who he was, but my brain didn't tell me the right name. And so I went up to him and I was like, aren't you Dustin Hoffman? Uh. He goes, no. And he never corrected me. And then later on, I figured out, oh my God, that was Spicoli. And my whole entire life, people uh, have called me Spicoli. Uh, and I just met. That's my nice. spirit animal and call him, uh, Justin, uh, call him Rain Man. That, oh. Well, you know what's funny? He's coming on the podcast next week, so I'll ask him about it. See if he remembers that. Yeah. <laughs> you got Dustin Hoffman on the podcast. Is there is there anyone you, that you guys have gotten? It's, it's, it's kind of one of those interview questions, so I didn't want to even ask it's it. Okay. But it, it, is fun, it is fun to, to find out. Um, have you guys gotten to play with a band or artist that you like super looked up to or like, I can't believe I'm playing the same thing. And you've had a few, a lot of great festivals and a lot of great tours. I mean, for, I mean, I think for all of us, like playing with Sublime with Rome and Common Kings, like Michael Franti, that whole tour was just Soja, insane. Yeah. Soja. So, so poor Soja, mm -hmm. like all those bands. I mean, at least for me, like, when I was first starting to like learn how to play guitar and bass, like I listened to all those bands, or especially Soja, like they were a big part of uh, when I was becoming an artist. And it was just surreal. So I'd hear a song and it'd take me right back to like when I was like listening to that song when I was like whatever, 15 or 16, yeah. learning it on guitar. And so it was just such a cool experience. Like it was like surreal almost. It's crazy that Soja's from D.C., Virginia, so I remember seeing them in, like, small clubs when I was younger, when I was too young to drink. You know, they're such great. Oh, yeah. Um, and then uh, I won't keep you guys too much longer, but Adam and B, you guys recently moved, right? How was that? Was that crazy during quarantine and COVID and stuff like that, or was it Did it just like any other move? Uh, luckily, I mean, we have, we have great friends and, and family to help us out for that move, so it wasn't too – you know, stressful at all. It's actually pretty gradual. Uh, we got the opportunity to move into our new house uh, like two months before our lease was up. So we just kind of took okay. small things. We took small things here and there. And, you know, then we knocked it out in one day, all the big stuff. But yeah. I mean, it looks like we've been living here for years. Yeah. <laughs> we got all the stuff hung up on the walls. <laughs> That's cool. It looks great. Is this your place right here? It looks great. I like clean. It is, yeah. Nice. Oh, yeah. This is the wall. This is the back wall on the TV. They got a big yeah. avocado tree in the backyard. Now, are you still in the St. Pete area? Yeah. It's uh, South Pasadena. We're near uh, St. Pete Beach, where we're near. Okay. Yeah, all of us live in St. Pete, so it's nice. Like, getting to rehearse and stuff is, like, super simple. So I know some bands, like, they'll be kind of spread out. So it's nice, like all of us live in St. Pete, so. And that's such a great area. Uh, Janice Live is, for me, top five venues in, in the country. And there's probably better ones and other ones, but I just love the whole vibe. And I love, you know, it's in definitely. that area, too. You guys have a great scene down there, too. You know, is it nice having other bands that you guys can play with? 
Oh yeah, I mean, there's a lot of good local musicians. Yeah, we played, we played with uh, Resonated, which is a local musician band uh, band around here, and uh, Cashed Out, obviously from Orlando. Yeah. We got Reese Brothers. We Reese got Brothers. Article Sound System. Article Sound System. We, we got, got to do Reggae Rise Up with them. Yeah, Jesus. Hip Abduction. Oh yeah, the Hip Abduction. Love those guys. Yeah, there's too. oh, Soflo is a really cool band. Soflo, yeah, they're well, actually, awesome. We're, we're gonna be seeing uh, yeah, those guys next week. Uh, Thanksgiving, we're gonna play Fort Myers, so it'll be that'll be a good time too. Did you say Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's dope. Yeah, yeah, it's like the day Literally. after Thanksgiving, and it's exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> that's awesome. Thanksgiving. Yeah. Um, last thing here, did you guys get to see the Kanye West interview on Joe Rogan's podcast? No, I didn't. I didn't see it, but I've seen him on David Letterman and. Uh, I was pretty shocked. Okay, well, since none of you saw it, I'm not really going to spend any time on that question. But uh, he's actually uh, – he confuses me because he's he's so – he is actually really, really smart. And then when he was talking about the yeah. stuff and making fairer contracts, it's not about, like, taking jobs away from, like, you know, booking agents, record labels. It's about just making things more fair and more accessible for everyone so that everyone can survive. You know, because it's really hard, especially right now. But then he says something fucking crazy, and I'm like, okay, dude. I mean, I don't, I don't know whether to believe you or not, just because you say so many weird things. But it also came down to a thing of mental health, obviously. And then, like before, where I used to make fun of him, I read an interview where Kim Kardashian had said something like, "You don't think I try to get him help, and you don't think I try to keep him on the meds and like do all this other stuff? Like, it's just as hard for me." And then I thought about it. I was like, man, now I kind of feel bad because I could see how that would be difficult with someone that's, especially when you're famous and you think you know everything, you know, so him not being on his meds, but yeah, that was a crazy interview. I highly recommend it at any time. He definitely says some pretty intelligent things sometimes, but he does follow it up with something where you're like, Oh man, he lost me. <laughs> he completely uh, lost me. For sure. Well, guys, thank you so much uh, for coming on the podcast. I really appreciate it. I had so much fun. Season three so far has been such a fun time with a lot of great people. So I hope you guys stay safe. Um, is there anything you want to promote or anything coming up that you want to get out there? Any merch that people can buy um, to support you guys or a Venmo? We got some new shirts coming out. We do. Yes, we do. Yeah, we got uh, some new uh, surfer skeleton tees coming out next week. Um, um yeah, you can look on serenation.com and I linked like our store on there and you can buy merch on our uh, website as well. But um, yeah, and obviously we just dropped this one's on me. Check that out. And we'll be releasing new music in 2021. So we will That's, do that. That is awesome. And anytime you guys, once you guys are touring again, anytime you come through Maryland and need uh, a nice place to stay at five bedrooms, so everyone can have their own bedroom if you want. Um, plenty of room studio we'll have to do a podcast in here and then we also have like all the music set up over there but you'll have to stop by and i appreciate it so much stay safe and we'll talk soon awesome. yep. thank, thank you so you much josh, josh.